What up, people? Crack Lemonade here. And I'm going to say this, honestly. Um, to me, the 90s was, like, the best time for X-Men. Like, you had X-Men, the animated series. Um, you had the X-Men toy biz line which was just like banger after banger after banger with these action figures and in like 96 at least you had this game right here which is X-Men 2 Clone Wars which in my opinion Frofro is the most perfect X-Men game that exists because this I believe like really um is the only X-Men game that ha that like has um the matching depictions of the X-Men characters from the 90s television show whereas like older X-Men games like they tend to change up the um costumes depending on the season of X-Men or series that is X-Men adjacent that's out um and I admittedly have not watched like any of like the newer x-men series um so for me this is like the perfect blend of like uh the 90s um cartoon aesthetic with the the game like i am i am playing as my favorite team of x-men in their most um iconic appearances to me throughout the existence of the franchise and depending on where you get into the series you're probably going to have like your favorite x-men team your favorite version of like you know wolverine or your favorite version of uh cyclops or your favorite version of gambit or any of those um characters because there's also multiple X-Men teams. There's multiple timelines. So, like, depending if you are, like, strictly into the comic books or if you are a fan of, like, the live-action movie adaptations or you like the 90s animated series, there there is a different team of X-Men for you. And, um... Oh, yeah, I'm, like, kind of skipping, like, the different depictions of the cartoons, because, like, for me, it's X-Men the Animated Series, and then the next one after that was, like, X-Men The Next Generation, where they made everybody younger, and they switched up the team a little bit. And it is its own take on the X-Men, which is probably related to a comic book, but I don't know. I'm not doing that deep research into it. Um, but, you know, I'm going to say that this one is, um, like, really the better one. Because you have uh, the first X-Men game on Sega Genesis where um, you play as, like, Wolverine and, like you hurt yourself when you use the claws or whatever um but this one like i feel like it flows perfectly it has like you know it's it's 16 bit graphics um but it pretty much like i'm looking at wolverine like i know exactly it is like the the iconic wolverine suit that i grew up like being a fan of so there really isn't anything like wrong with this game um and another reason i wanted to play this is i actually um 
ended ended up watching X Men ninety seven. Um, just seeing so much praise from the show on Instagram mostly and just seeing kind of the memes and reactions of uh like the first five episodes and then ultimately just watching it and my first thought when watching uh, um when watching X-Men 97 especially when I got up to the part of the prime sentinels is i hope the people who made terminator genesis are watching because that was the first thing i thought of when i saw the new model of sentinels and like how you know they integrated it and it in my opinion it is one of the best ways to introduce a new enemy to an established franchise. Um, and they didn't do the crime that Terminator Genesis did, which was um, turn one of the main characters of the franchise into a villain, which is what I think got a lot of people to turn on... I mean, the Terminator franchise was struggling since Terminator 2, to be perfectly honest, and it felt like in the 2000s they were doing their best um, efforts to kind of phase out the character of John Connor, and I think... I don't know, because I'm not looking into this any deeper than me talking about it in this video because i actually i do have terminator games but like um whatever cross that bridge when we get there but i was about to say i didn't have terminator games that's why i clarified i do um the the thing about that is like in the 2000s after terminator 3 it felt like they were trying to phase out the character of John Connor. And my theory is because Terminator 3, people were kind of upset that um, Edward Furlong, the guy who played uh, John Connor in Terminator 2, wasn't playing John, T John Connor in Terminator 3. So, um, it, it seemed like because they weren't the the studios weren't going to hire Edward Furlong because he seems to have had some legal issues in the early 2000s um and this is purely speculation i did not look up this to confirm it but there were some legal issues and the man uh you know had some troubles perfectly fine i hope he's doing well but i believe that because of the timing of that they did not want to bring him back as a character in the movies so instead of bringing him back they found a way to i guess um turn him into a villain but again it just it wasn't done well um and i think there i think there are other ways to um change the focus of the protagonist without like killing characters from the original series unless it's done in a way that makes sense so like for example, uh, still on the Terminator thing, if they went to the future and we got to see a John Connor that looked like the old man John Connor at the beginning of Terminator 2 get killed in like battle and not turned into a machine, I think that would do better 
um, with an audience as opposed to like let's turn John Connor into a Terminator because it would be so ironic and yeah it's ironic but like I it's audience perception um I say all this to say that I enjoyed X-Men 97 I think that um it was it was well put together and it didn't try to undo anything that happened in the original X-Men cartoon right so like everything is kind of a continuation of events that happened in um the original X-Men 90s cartoon which I'm gonna say the original 90s cartoon definitely passes the smell test um in terms of watchability because it's action it does have some narrative but um definitely after season three uh when the phoenix saga happens i believe i believe the phoenix saga is in season three i could be saying the wrong season and you can correct me if uh if it happened in season four or season two, one of those. Um, but after the Phoenix Saga, it when I rewatched it, when I last rewatched it, it was weird because there would be some episodes where like Jean Grey was there, and then there would be some episodes where Jean Grey flew off into space within the same series, within the same season. And they happened after each other, like sequentially after. So, to me, looking back to it as if as a fan, I think that you know there were some like narrative hiccups, but I also attribute that to um, the '90s. <laughs> and what I mean by that is that. TV shows aired when they aired and sometimes they would air um, reruns but unless you bought a TV guide magazine or whatever and you knew like what channel aired the like the episode at what time you're kind of taking a little bit of a gamble right so it it makes sense because like it's not it it's very uncommon for someone to be able to like rewatch episodes of a show on demand in order unless you had a VCR, you, t you set the VCR timer, the VCR was powered on and didn't lose power, you know, from like a power outage or anything, and you recorded all the episodes, you had a blank tape, you had enough time for to record the whole episode and all the commercials, there was a lot, there was a lot that you had to do to make sure um, you could watch episodes in order at that time in the 90s. And it also was in the infancy of home video. So it wasn't like we're getting a VHS set of all the episodes of X-Men. If we're getting the VHS set of X-Men, it's going to be like, uh, three or four selected episodes. They could be from the same season. They could just have the same theme. Um, and, and that was very common with a lot of shows in the 90s being released on home video because that wasn't like the whole um, season box set wasn't common when it came to releasing home video and yeah so that's why I give it 
that's why I give like the 90s X-Men a little bit more grace when it comes to um, the episode order and how like there really were episodes where Jean Grey was present but then there were episodes where Jean also flew off with the Phoenix. And maybe there is somebody who's like rewatched the episodes like a dozen times and, and contextualized it for everybody and like has an actual reason as to why. Um, in, in some episodes, not every episode, and not consistently back-to-back -back episodes, Jean Grey was present as a character, and then other times, the whole team will talk about how much they miss Jean, and like, they need to find her. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's pretty much it. <laughs> so, hey. I, I, I don't have that much reflections about that. Um, but yeah, in terms of X Men '97, um, that show is an example of people who actually cared about what they were writing. They had um, basically a a plan of execution for the first season. And, and I do hope that the second season um, is good. And I also do hope because I've been getting a bunch of videos about uh, comic book storylines. And um, with with that one, I saw that in the, in the comic storyline where um, Magneto took away Wolverine's adamantium. Wolverine became feral so that would be dope if that happened in uh, season 2 of X-Men 97 we get like a feral Wolverine and we get to see some of these um, uh, multiverse plots from like the uh, 90s comics where um, I feel like I feel like it kind of leads in they all kind of lead into each other, and um, with the way those comics were written, um, they could choose to blend a couple of comic storylines that make sense to be blended with each other. Either way, um, it's a good series. The original, the original 90s cartoon is still really good to rewatch. Um, if you if you want to or if you haven't seen it before and x-men 97 is actually like really good and doesn't like i feel like it just does the thing of like not pissing off the fan base by making unnecessary changes like i know some people were upset with like the whole uh, Gambit and Rogue situation, but overall, I have no I have no complaints about that. Um, and I mean, I'm not gonna provide context to anything I'm saying about X Men '97, so I do apologize for people who have not seen it, and they may quantify the words that I'm speaking as spoilers, but um, the things I'm saying are hopefully broad and generic enough that you you would only get it until you until you actually watch the cartoon. And I'm not actually spo spoiling any kind of plot, but that's also how, depending on how someone uh, defines spoilers, you know. So you know, everybody has. Everybody has, like, their own definition of, like, what a spoiler is, like, what you consider a spoiler. Like, do you just not want to know anything? Do, like, do you not want to know things, like, at the end? Um, I, I don't know. I've talked to different people over the years, and everybody has, like, a different threshold of, like, what um, qualifies as a spoiler. So, hopefully, to people who watch this, 
I do not meet your personal definition of what a spoiler is because hopefully I did not spoil anything. I just talked in broad brush strokes about things I liked and did not like about a certain couple of uh, shows. But that's all for me, guys. I will catch you next time. Um, and probably, well, I'll probably play um, the X Men game for Super Nintendo that's not as good um, eventually. And I, I do have other X Men titles, but that really depends on. Um, I guess if I rewatch something X Men related that is connected to the game, I don't. Well, well, well. That, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna promise you anything. Um, but there, there are other videos. There are other topics that I'm gonna talk about when it comes to uh, gaming and nostalgia and my memories and how those things form my thoughts as a grown crack lemon. Um, Alright y'all, peace.